No, missed it. Three quarters of an inch. Well, I missed it again. Well, I'm going to take the camera over so you can see what's happening. I keep missing it. But for 76 years old, I guess I can't complain. Okay, here we are at the desk now. I noticed uh, my T-shirt. Did you see my T-shirt? I am the righteousness of God. That uh, One of the guys in the office made that for me. And uh, I'll tell you about that sometime. Okay, here we are looking at the book of Revelation. Now, here's what I've done. You saw last week the wall where I cut and pasted the, the entire book of Revelation uh, according to the seals, the trumpets, and the vials. I'm struggling with a way to make this understandable to you, so I think this will be more helpful today, what we're going to do. Now, here's what I've done. You see the... Uh, the color coding I've done here on the, let me enlarge that a little bit. You see where I've color coded it. Uh, second coming is in blue. The throne scene is in that purple, so forth, so forth. And so here we have the entire book of Revelation. And you see where I've gone through and coded it according to the subject matter. So you see the same, notice this uh, uh, kind of uh, pinky color here uh, repeated over and over again. There it is again. And again, uh, that's the subject we're going to deal with right now. You see it's scattered throughout the book of Revelation. There it is again. And uh, so we're going to pull all those together. The subject is the 144,000 and see what it has to say. Now starting off, the first mention of the 144,000 uh, is not necessarily in the order that it occurs. So you'll, we'll, see, we'll jump, jump from 7 to 14 to 18 and back to 11. And uh, because, as we told you before, we go through the book of Revelation four times. And one of the main themes in all four times through the book of Revelation is the Jewish 144,000 who've been sealed. So we see them making repeated appearances throughout the book of Revelation. And it's not, it's not in a, the order that will actually happen. Uh, uh, as God reveals it, sometimes it's relevant. It's not the primary subject, but it's part of the subject. And so it can, it can get confusing if you don't put it on a wall like I did and look at it or put it into some order on your computer. All right. The first time, 1615, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. That's written to the Christians, excuse me, that's written to the believers during the tribulation. All right. The 144,000 are sealed and commissioned before the day of wrath. For the great day of wrath has come, who shall be able to stand? And then that's 617, then directly into 7-1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds, that they should not blow on the earth, nor the seed, nor the tree. And I saw another angel sent him to the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. So this is in preparation for what we'll see in the seals, trumpets and vials, when judgments come upon the earth. So he says, 7-3, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we've sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. So as a detective, a Bible detective, this is our clue that this occurs before any of the judgments fall. He said, until we've sealed them, don't touch the earth, don't touch the sea, don't touch the trees. So later when we'll read about uh, the sea becoming his blood and the green grass being burned up and the trees being destroyed. We know that the 144,000 were sealed before any of that took place. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, they were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel, and he names all those tribes. Now, the next time we jump to, from 7 to chapter 11, and this must precede the fifth seal and all the trumpets and vials. 
Uh, it must be before the last three and one half years because of the events that occurred during that time. And he gives us a date here to go with. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod. This is the angel talking with John saying, Rise, measure the temple of God, the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. So there's your three and a half years, the latter years of the tribulation, when Antichrist sets up his headquarters in the temple in Jerusalem, and at the three and a half year mark, he begins his persecution of Christians, and especially the Jewish people. So he gives him a rod, says, measure the temple. And he says, and the holy city shall they try foot 42 months, and I'll give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. So here we, again, we have a length of time that this two witnesses must occur before the last half, the last three and a half years of the tribulation. These are the two olive trees and two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So the events that you see in the latter, uh, starting in the, the fifth seal, from the fifth seal on the events that you see taking place in all the trumpets, all the thunders, and all the vials, come about with these two resurrected Jewish prophets who make pronouncements like Moses did when he called down fire in Egypt or called down lice or water turned to blood or the, the things that he did. So these two prophets will be God's instrument, visible instrument on earth, bringing these judgments so the people know that the judgments are coming from God. They'll be real prophets, not YouTube prophets, not Facebook prophets. If any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. If any man hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. And they have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecies. These have power to shut heaven, it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood. You remember the seals? And to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And when the dragon saw, and we're going from six, from chapter 11 to chapter 12, and when the dragon, that Satan, saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. The woman is Israel, the man-child is Jesus. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she should fly into the wilderness. We have Old Testament passages which help us understand this. We don't have time to look at it. Under, into her place where she is nourished for a time, times, and a half time. We know from the book of Daniel that's three and one half years from the face of the serpent. Time is, we call it a year, but it's actually a Jewish time, which is 360 days, not quite a year. Times, that's two, uh, those 360 day periods, and a half time, that's a half of the 360. So that's, we, we call it three and a half years, but it should be short of our three and a half years by about a little over 16, 17 days, something like that. From the face of the serpent, nourished for a time, time, and a half time. From the, so what's this saying? Is that the children of Israel and the the 144,000 are going to keep prophesying and until they're all killed. They're not going to retreat. But the nation of Israel is going to flee south into the wilderness there that's below Jerusalem. <laughs> Terrible place. I've been there. It's unbelievable, those mountains and, and the way they're piled up and the narrow cracks and crevices and hot and dry and so forth. They're going to flee down there in and, and, and some of those caves to survive the Antichrist during the last three and a half years. And they'll be nourished. God will feed them as manna from heaven and water. He'll provide them like he did in the wilderness for a time, times, and half a time. So that's three and one half years. And the serpent cast out of his mouth waters of flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. The earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the fl uh, flood, which the dragon cast out. So there's going to be a circumstance whereby the Antichrist can break a dam or a levee and cause that wilderness area to be flooded. Remember this sea, the Dead Sea is, I think, 15, 1,600 feet below sea level. And so if you were to bring it up to sea level, it would flood back into the wilderness there and drown the people in there. But God said the earth will open up and swallow up the water, so it'll go into a subterranean cavities. 
And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. So there'll be other Jews who won't be in the wilderness, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So Antichrist is, <laughs> above all, he's going to hate the Jews uh, because they represent to him God's special people, God's special program, and that's the reason he hates them. And you might translate that into a lot of historical events. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. All right, they've discovered the Lord Jesus Christ and the power in the blood of the Lamb. Now, according, contrary to a lot of preachers, it's not the death of the Lamb, it is the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony, that is, they testified that Jesus Christ is the Savior, He's the Messiah of Israel, and they love not their lives unto the death. That's the third thing. By the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto the death, a particular death, which is decapitation. So, you know, if you, if you love your life more than you do honoring God, you're a, you're a weakling, you're a spiritual weakling. You're subject to, to slavery by anybody that'll come along. You've got to be willing to boldly and hilariously die for the Lord Jesus Christ if you're going to be free. There's no other way to be free. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and this, is, this, by the way, is the two witnesses, but I'm mixing them with the 144,000 because they are Jewish, and uh, their, uh, their activities parallel the 144,000. Their dead bodies shall lie on the st uh, street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, that is Jerusalem, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three and a half days, three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, make merry, and shall send gifts one to another because those two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. You see, they're going to attribute everything that's happening to these two prophets because these two prophets will be the visible initiator. When a, when a seal is opened, prophet speaks. When a trumpet sound prophet speaks. When a, a vial is poured out, a prophet is calling that down. And uh, three and a half days, the spirit of life of God entered in them, and they stood upon their feet. Great fear fell upon them when saw them. That's going to be a lot of fun when they're standing over them there, and their head's over here, and their body's here, and the head goes rolling over, joins the body, and the prophets stand back up and say, ooh, that was a good rest. And whoop, they're gone. Just like that, they're raptured out. So this is after the 144,000 are killed. And when he'd opened the seventh seal, so the sixth seal is where the second coming, the, the day of wrath followed by the second coming takes place. The sixth trumpet is where the day of wrath followed by the uh, second coming takes place. And the sixth vial, excuse me, the seventh vial, it goes down to the end there, is where the uh, final events take place. And I saw another angel which stood before God. To him were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood before the altar, having golden censer, which was given unto him with much incense. So this helps date it. Seven trumpets are, are ready to sound. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came up with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire off the altar and cast it to the earth. And there were voices, thunders, lightnings, and earthquake. These are the souls of those who have been decapitated. Their souls are under the altar there in Jerusalem. And they are praying to God for vengeance. Uh, it's proper to pray for vengeance. It's not proper to give vengeance because we're not good enough to do that but it's proper to pray for vengeance. The seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given in every one of them. Then it was said to them that they should rest yet for a little season till their fellow servants and also and their brethren should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So they're crying for vengeance under the altar, and they say, shh, be quiet. Just rest a little while. We're going to go ahead and give you a white robe now. Uh, and when this is over with, we've got something special for you. But right now, we're going to wait until all of the Jews are killed that will be killed during the tribulation. And when that happens, then we'll take you up. 
Now here is the rapture of the tribulation saints. This is chapter 11. You see how we've jumped around because it, it's complex, but if you take each storyline, like each the, the seals and trumpets and vials separate them, and you've got a couple intervals in between there, and look at those storylines, so interval Antichrist, in, interval 144,000. You'll see that they bring in several factors from different places in the tribulation to make a major point, like each gospel makes a major point. And they heard a voice from heaven saying to them, Come up hither, and they send it up to heaven in a cloud. Whoop, that's, that's a rapture. And their enemies beheld them. That's just like Jesus went up in a cloud. Uh, and here is the patience of the saints. Patience is that which causes you to endure hardship, persecution to the end. Uh, here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So that's special. The, the tribulation saints will have to be, will be saved by the faith of Jesus and keeping the commandments. All tribulation saints, including the one and four thousand and the two witnesses, are who these are. These, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works. So the few more left to die, blessed are they. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on Mount Zion with him, a hundred and forty-four thousand. So they're all dead and raptured, having his father's name written in their foreheads, and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Sounds like a big shindig to me. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne, before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn the song but the 144,000. So it must be some kind of special song that no one can know it. But uh, maybe they're singing in an angelic tongue or something which were redeemed from the earth, 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. So this is after their redemption and resurrection. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they're virgins. So all the 140,000 are male and they're virgins. I guess God is not too woke which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. First fruits because the 144,000 caused many more people, Jew and Gentile, to come to Christ during the tribulation period. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, over his image, over his mark, over the number of his name, stand... Uh, on the sea of glass, having harps of God, and they sung the song of Moses, the servant of God, the song of the Lamb. Why the song of Moses? Because they're Jewish. Uh, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, O Lord, God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name, thou art holy. All nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. After this I look, behold, the temple of the tabernacle of the testimony temple of the tabernacle of the testimony. I like the writing there. In heaven was opened, and the seven angels came out of the temple having seven plagues. This is the uh, final part. Clothed in pure and white linen, having breastplate girdle, the girdle, and one of the beasts came into the seven angels in the golden vials full of the wrath of God. Now, I got that included. That's not part of the, the 44,000, but the reason I included that was to show you the timing. Uh, the wrath of God has not been poured out yet. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, so John is there watching the church in heaven, and then a new crowd of people come in to heaven, come into the scene. And the, he answered and said unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said to him, Sir, thou knowest, he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, washed the robes, made them white, and the blood of the Lamb, therefore they before the throne of God, Serve him day and night in his temple, and he sitteth upon the throne, shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat, because that's the kind of thing happening down on the earth during the tribulation. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, shall lead them in the fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a voice of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God was with men. You wipe away all tears from their eyes, no more sorrow, death, nor crying, neither more, any more pain. The former things are passed away. Behold, all things are new, he said, right? For these true sayings are true and faithful. What you read in the book of Revelation is true and faithful. 
It is done. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And uh, so he finishes it up there. So that uh, that's the 144,000 uh, jumping around. You say, why would God write it like that? Why not write it more more systematic so we could understand it? Because he's making a spiritual point each time he goes through, a different spiritual point. And so he calls upon different events to illustrate that point, just as you find in the Gospels, how it jumps around to make a spiritual point, to carry a theme all the way through. And another thing, the reason I've got a video on that, uh, you can watch it on, uh, uh, I've forgotten the name of it, uh, they'll, they'll put it up there for you, but it's where they ask Jesus, why do you speak in parables? And he tells them, that he speaks in parables, so those that see might not see, those who hear might not hear, and so they won't understand. So God writes the book of Revelation. Uh, it's uh, kind of a sealed up book, and uh, he writes it so that only those who search diligently, uh, spiritually minded, and inquire will understand it, and none of us understand it perfectly, completely. Uh, you may find that I have um, gotten something a little out of order here. If I have, let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm, my word is never the final word, and my thoughts are never the final thoughts. So I'm, I'm open to learning uh, constantly uh, because I keep, I keep learning new things all the time. All right, I guess I've worn you out. I'm going to stop there, and uh, we'll get back at it shortly. Get your own print of Mike's Revelation painting at ngj.org revelation. Available as a poster or a full-size banner, and includes a copy of Mike's Revelation Handbook Study Guide. 